Science deals with things we can observe and study and test. You don't observe anything about evolution. If you have something that's designed like an eyeball, it demands a designer. If painting is proof there was a painter, even if you never see the guy. A building is proof there was a builder, and a watch is proof there was a watchmaker, and design, the creation, is proof there was a creator. See, design simply demands a designer, period. Invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. They are without excuse, the Bible says. There's no excuse. The psalmist said, when I consider the heavens. You know, God knows that the study of science will draw us to him. Satan knows that too. So Satan has worked really hard in the field of science to make sure it pushes kids away from God. And we need some good godly science teachers to get involved in the school system and turn this thing around. Okay? And by the way, we can prove the existence of God by the impossibility of the contrary. It's impossible that there not be a designer. It's just not possible. There had to be a designer, okay? I like to show evolutionists this picture. I say, guys, here we have, as far as I know, the world's largest rock group. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know of a bigger one? I'd like to see it, okay? Um, I'll say, do you think there's any way George Washington's face could have appeared on this rock by chance? I say, no, it was designed by a guy named Borglum. It took him a long time to build it. Okay, very good. Now, let me ask you a question. You say there's no way this uh, face could appear on the rock by chance. You don't think wind could have done that? Abrasion, exfoliation, thermal expansion of the rock? Nothing? Nope, nope. Happened by, happened by design. Okay. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you think George Washington himself, with 50 trillion cells in his body and all these complex systems, happened by chance? I say, yeah. Now, wait, wait, wait. You don't think his face could appear on a rock by chance, but you do think his whole complex anatomy could happen by chance. Are you dumb in any other area, or is that the only one, you know? <laughs> then they tell kids that plants are adapted to their environment. Adapted? Yes, boys and girls, gills are an adaptation to living in water. Oh, well, how did they live before they adapted the gills? Hmm? Well, you see, Mr. Hoven, for millions of years, they all died. None of them lived until they adapted the gills. Oh, I see. Why don't they say it's a design feature? See, they avoid using the word designed because then some kid's going to say, who's the designer? Hmm? Adaptations for living on land. Legs. Oh, yes, boys and girls. Legs support the body's weight as well as allow movement from place to place. Well, that's true. It doesn't prove they adapted by themselves, though. Lungs, oh boy, the delicate structure of a fish's gills depends on water for support. On land, lungs carry out gas exchange. That's true. That's not proof one changed to the other, though. They just make this mental, imaginary connection in the kids' minds. I've got a Casio data bank stopwatch, or uh, watch, okay? Holds 300 phone numbers. It's a calculator, stopwatch, an alarm clock, and a countdown timer. It does not tell time. I have to look at it. But it's a pretty amazing machine, 70 bucks at Walmart. Um, I was in Japan a couple years ago, but I did not see the guy who makes the Casio data bank watch. I never saw him. Do I have to see the guy who made it to believe he exists? Hmm. Is it logical for me to stand here in Tennessee and say, I believe there's a watch designer in Japan that made this thing? Is that logical? Even if I never see him? Sure. Would it be illogical for me to say, I've never seen him, so I don't believe he exists. That would be totally dumb, wouldn't it? And you don't have to see the Creator to believe he exists, okay? Evolutionists argue against design using arguments they designed. Mm, think about that one. There's a great book talking about the complexity of living things at a micro scale. We sell the book at our website. Michael Behe wrote this on Darwin's Black Box. He spends a whole chapter describing the hair on a bacteria. That hair is so complicated, it's attached to a little tiny motor. The motor is so tiny that eight million of them would fit in the cross-section of a human hair, but the motor turns 100,000 RPM. Let's see you build a motor like that. Pretty amazing. And as things get smaller, the world they live in feels more sticky to them. The viscosity of the fluid seems greater. So a bacteria swimming through water is about like a person swimming through peanut butter. And that little motor is so powerful and turns so fast, that bacteria can swim about like a person going 60 miles an hour 
few peanut butter.